Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 9th, 2022 edition of the Sands in at Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. CyberChef is one of those deceptively simple tools that is a joy to use in my opinion and probably took an army of JavaScript geniuses to create in order to make it so simple. Well, actually maybe it was an army given that it came out of the British GCHQ, but today Didier wrote a nice example showing how to analyze obfuscated Visual Basic script with nothing but CyberChef. Didier assembles a recipe in CyberChef starting with UTF-16 decoding, the hex dump pulled from the malware, and after filtering some empty lines and some visual basic code becomes evident, but uh, that was pretty straightforward. Didier then goes further and shows how the actual obfuscated strings within the Visual Basics code can further be deobfuscated using CyberChef and how in the end you'll end up with the URL the next stage of the malware was downloaded from. A full link to the recipe is shared by DDE as well. Now, earlier this week, I saw a vulnerability announced in PFSense's PF Blocker engine. Well, honestly, just forgot to cover it. So thanks to Joe from Sans uh, for reminding me earlier today. I know there are a number of ISC readers who use this tool. PF Blocker NG is a plugin for the open source firewall PFSense. Not really sure if it's also available in uh, OpenSense, but uh, the problem here is that it does allow for arbitrary code execution. The plugin itself does not validate the host header correctly. And of course, the host header is supplied by the user. Users are always evil. And that's why we have a problem here. The plugin only sort of escapes uh, some characters by using the HTML special chars function in a uh, PHP, which really is more meant sort of for cross-site scripting protection. Even there, it's not necessarily uh, perfect, but definitely uh, not meant sort of to escape shell characters. And that's exactly what happens here. For example, it does allow the pipe and the semicolon, which are often used sort of to inject uh, shell commands. And uh, that's sort of the vulnerability being uh, demonstrated here. The vulnerability was found by the IH team and reported first to NetGate, the maintainer of PFSense, and later they also reported it to the author of the plugin. A patch was released early in June. Sadly, NetGate's vulnerability disclosure process isn't really that great in the sense that they sort of don't take responsibility of these community-controlled plugins, of course. They are not controlled by NetGate. They are uh, controlled and created by these maintainers, but they're sort of included in that uh, PFSense ecosystem. So there was no real good sort of announcement that there was a critical patch earlier in June. So definitely make sure that you patch this. With this uh, blog post released now by IH team, we do have a working exploit. And it's really not difficult to exploit this particular vulnerability. IH team waited a couple months to make sure that people actually patched. Living off uh, the cloud is all the rage these days, of course, among attackers, and it usually refers to the use of legitimate cloud services in order to exfiltrate data or sometimes implement command and control channels. And of course, we have seen, for example, uh, bookmark syncing being used and Dropbox and uh, various uh, cloud services like this. The latest example is a uh, GIF shell, a technique uh, using a number of Microsoft Teams vulnerabilities to create a command and control channel using the Microsoft Teams infrastructure. And I would argue that these aren't really that much vulnerabilities that are being exploited here. And uh, I don't think Microsoft will actually patch on any of this. It's really just, well, features in some ways. Now, first of all, this first requires that the malware is already installed on the victim's machine. What we're talking about here is basically the command and control channel part. The 
malware will basically just scan the user's Microsoft Teams logs for any new messages. Any messages uh, in Microsoft Teams are written uh, to these logs, and that makes it easy for malware to basically just tail that log and wait for new instructions. Now, the simple way of doing this, of course, would be just to send uh, these instructions to the victim. But, well, the victim may be a little bit suspicious if they are receiving, like, commands and such. So, uh, what the author here did, and the reason why it's called uh, GIF shells is they use uh, GIF images and uh, then embed the commands in these images. And one thing that uh, should probably be addressed in Microsoft Teams is that uh, by default, the users from other Microsoft Teams tenants are able to send messages to any other Microsoft Teams tenant. So the victim and the attacker don't necessarily have to be part of the same organization in order to send these messages. The article at Bleeping Computer here also points out that this can be used for phishing, of course. And well, since all of the data is going back and forth to Microsoft Cloud Services, detection is pretty tricky. So at this point, I would recommend uh, as part of some awareness training or so uh, to uh, make users aware that if they're seeing some odd messages, odd images and such from users they don't recognize uh, to report about this for further investigation. Well, and this is it uh, for uh, today. Thanks for listening. I'll be traveling on Monday for some meetings. Uh, you should be able to make the uh, Monday and Tuesday podcasts, uh, but uh, well, in case traveling so is getting difficult, never know these days, maybe there won't be a podcast on Monday. Let's hope I'll talk to you again on Monday. Bye.